welcome to uh, Watch the Series, the best and worst of August 2012. This is Brogan Hayes. And this right here is Rory Cashel. And we will be discussing the best three and worst three films of uh, August 2012, like I said already. Yeah. Yeah. So, top three of August 2012. Number three is one I disagree with. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Oh. Okay. But uh, Brogan loved it a whole lot. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it as much as Brogan, so I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, it's Samsara. Which is this sort of stream of consciousness documentary that was filmed over the course of four years all around the world, and it's all these images of our world, and they're just amazingly shot on 70 mil and amazingly put together, and it tells a story without telling a story, and... Kind of what you take from it is based on you and your personality and all of that kind of stuff. So I thought it was fantastic. And it's shot on 70 millimeter film, which means that it's absolutely gorgeous. So it's number three. I, I thought it was like a really nice art installation you might see in the museum. But it was like mm. one you have to see that for, I don't know, 100 minutes or however long mm. it was. Mm. Or it was the world's most expensive screensaver. <laughs> it was beautiful to look at. But it's definitely not for everybody. No, it's not. And that was why we decided to put it at number three. Also because yeah. Rory didn't love it as much as I did. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It's like a five-star film and a one-star film happening at the same time. Yeah. Depending on who you are. Yeah. And the mood you're in when you go see it, which is kind Sometimes of... Sometimes you just don't want to go to an art museum. Yeah. So that's that. Um, uh, out of ten. See, again, like it could be a ten or it could be a one. For me, it would have to be like a six. So that's in between, so it's not a 10 or a 1. Yeah. So you're just making shit up. That's there. why it's like 10 or 1. I'm trying to hit like a, a medium, but like a positive medium. Alright. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because it upset me in places. The chicken bit. Yeah. And the and the, the tranny, Miss Tranny dance. Yeah. You could see where the yeah. wieners were. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So number 2 um, was Ted. Uh, it's not been a very good year for comedy so far. Uh, and Ted is the best of a bad bunch. That's the first film by Seth MacFarlane, who did The Family Guy and American Dad, and gave him a show. And for anyone who doesn't know what it's about, it's basically a young Mark Wahlberg uh, wishes he had a friend, and he, his teddy bear comes to life, and then teddy bear grows up and it stays alive, and Mark Wahlberg becomes adult Mark Wahlberg, and it's all about how. Like, growing up is hard. And they grow up together, and they're completely, like, total bromance with this teddy. And mm. It's really, really, really funny in parts, but the trailer is sort of misleading as well, because there's this whole other story going on underneath with Giovanni Ribisi, which is not referred to in the trailer at all, which is a good and a bad thing. It's also the worst part of the film, I think. Yeah. Because he gets involved a lot in the end of the film, yeah. and that's when it stops being funny. Yeah. Uh, but on the whole... Uh, it's uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Uh, Mia Kunis is in it, and I don't know anyone who doesn't like her. Until she started dating Ashton Kutcher. She's beautiful, though. Yeah, I forgive her. Yeah, she's gorgeous. So, out of ten? Uh, seven. I would say seven as well. Yeah. See, me medium. Yeah. So, our number one film of August 2012 is... The Imposter. Which is sort of a surprise, because fans of the show will know that Rory, in a previous episode, said he didn't like documentaries. Not so much. Mm. Uh, this is a documentary, and it is the best film of the month, and probably will end up being one of the best films of the year. Absolutely. Um, do you want to take, take it away what it's about? Uh, Frederick Bourdain is this... He's the protagonist and the kind of main focus of the story, and... Uh, this kid went missing in Texas, Nicholas Barkley, when he was about 14. And three years later, in the mid-90s, Frederick Bourdain decided to impersonate him so that he could start a new life in America. But it's really fascinating because the family of the kid who's gone missing realise it's quite obvious that Frederick Bourdain doesn't look anything like Nicholas Barkley, who went missing. But they go with it. Mm -hmm. So there's all this stuff that's going on underneath the surface that comes out slowly and drips and drops. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And it's beautifully put together as well, which through reconstructions and voiceovers and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's it's a little bit scary. It's not like, oh, my God, I'm scared. But, like, <laughs> uh, like it's like a proper 
Hollywood psychological thriller. Yeah. It'll really get into your head. Yeah. You couldn't actually, I think, if someone wrote this. You'd be like, you'd, that's crap. Yeah, I'm not going to make that film because it's totally unbelievable, but it's true. But it's, and it's brilliant. Highly recommended. Yeah, absolutely. Nine out of ten. I agree with you with your nine out of ten. Nine, yeah. you guys. Yeah. It's you guys. Yeah. You guys right here. Nine. Mm-hmm. The baddest film in this whole of the month. The most laughably bad. And they, sometimes their comedies are not funny. Yeah. Actually, they nearly all were. Yeah. Um, so the third worst film of August 2012 was Step Up 4. Mm. It sure Ste- was. Step Up 4, Miami Heat. No less. Give it a twilight title now. Mm. Or Step Up Revolution if you're in America. If you're in America. Mm. Hi! How's it going? So Step Up 4, the plot, if I remember correctly, was someone had to dance to save something from someone. It was some kind of building that was going to be shut down. So step up four, yeah, people were dancing to save like buildings from a rich man who wanted to make people Stuff. for rich buildings. Yeah. Uh, rich buildings for people. And or the other way around. Yeah. It's fine with that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but dancers didn't want that to happen. Damn it. Uh, and a social protest through dance. Mm, interpretive writing, I guess. Yeah. But um, it was not very good. The dancing was not very good. It was in 3D, which wasn't very good. The soundtrack wasn't even very good. And that's usually like the saving grace of yeah. these films. But it was not good. That um, one with all the stuff falling, that was all right. The moment, three seconds and then... Yeah, that's right. There's a bit... right. Everyone, all the dancers in the film are poor. Mm. Uh, but one of the dance scenes involves them dropping thousands and thousands of dollars on, top on the, of on the, the ground yeah. while they're dancing. It was yeah. like, well, use that money. The money you just wasted on a dance... And this other thing. And yeah, they, and all the like the equipment and the really good their outfits. Yeah. And they seem I don't They're misappropriating their funds completely in this film. I mean I just irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. Get your shit in order. Yeah. Miami. Yeah. Uh out of ten? Three? Yeah. 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 It was like it was bad, but it had it, it had it heart in the right place. Yeah, it was tolerable ish. I mean, if you were hung over and you couldn't reach the remote, like fine, leave it on. But I wouldn't seek this film out to no. be honest. No. So the second worst film of August two thousand and twelve was The Watch, which, it was. Uh, which is Vince Vaughn, Ben Stiller, Jonah Hill, Richard Ayoade. Richard Ayoade. Uh, as four men in an American small town who set up a neighborhood watch to, you know, look look out for crimes and criminals and stuff, watch but instead discover an alien invasion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's from the director of uh, the Lowly Island stuff and Hot Rod, which I loved. Yeah. But this film was not good. No. It was n- not funny. It had to be rewritten a load of times, and uh, Seth Rogen was brought in to rewrite and stuff, and you can actually tell that this film was rewritten, and it was changed from a young audience and made into a film for a more mature audience just by throwing in jokes about genitals. Mm. And it didn't really work very well. No. There was a couple of times where I laughed. I mean, it's not as bad as our number one worst film, which is yet to be revealed, <gasps> but it had a load of scope that it just didn't use at all. And Richard Ayoade is hilarious. The episode episode of Community that he directed was brilliant. And yet he's just reduced into like a cardboard cutout version of Moss from the IT crowd. It's really upsetting and disappointing. It's considering all the talent involved. It yeah. was wasted potential. Yeah. And a lot of money. I think it was very expensive to make. Looks like it was quite expensive to so make. So it was a shame. Yeah. Um, out of ten. Two, two? To preempt the question you were about to ask. Yeah. Two out of ten. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It was pretty bad. Pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, and number one, our worst film of August 2012 was... The Three Stooges. No matter what happens to you, if there is a nuclear apocalypse and the only place to hide is in a screening of The Three Stooges, go back outside. Yeah. Seriously. It cannot be as bad outside in a nuclear apocalypse as watching The Three Stooges. Seriously. The... The plot doesn't matter. Nothing I can tell you about the film matters. The only thing I can tell you is that when I went to see it, an hour into it, I burst out laughing. Because I had realised that in the last hour, I hadn't smiled once. Yeah. And I was just sitting there to myself going, it's actually funny how unfunny this film is. And I just 
like got into convulsions. Yeah, he did, and it was really weird because I thought he was laughing at the film, and I would have to unfriend him and you know do was and serious on my own, which would be. Have upsetting. to question my sanity and yeah. way of life. Yeah. Um, bringing <laughs> the Three Stooges into the modern day, I think, was a mistake from the beginning. The Three Stooges was great, but it was a product of its time. And there's a reason why it took so long to get onto the big screen. I mean, at one point they were considering Sean Penn and Benicio Del Toro for this film. And then ended up with Sean Hayes and some other people. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. just terrible. There's nothing There's nothing redeemable about it. I mean, at one point, Jersey Shaw cast turn up. <sighs> I mean, just now. It's awful. Yeah. Out of ten? Christ. I don't like giving a film zero because a zero implies... Like, nothing good happened. <laughs> but, like, people worked, I guess. It, it it paid people who didn't have any money. Yeah. Like, it could, it could have put food on the table of kids who, like, were starving or whatever. It also Parents. ended. That was a really good part of it. Yeah. It actually ended. Yeah. Someone did the end credits. The end yeah. credits were pretty good. Yeah, so out of One. ten. I would give it zero out of ten. Ooh. There was nothing redeemable about this film. If I could give minuses, I totally would. So. Yeah. Just stop it. Just stop making films like that. Stop. No more. And it's been greenlit for a sequel. Yay! So, uh, three films we're most looking forward to in September. Are? Looper. Looper's the one, yeah, the most the most look forward to is. Uh, intelligent sci-fi action film. Yay, rare. Yay. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis and other people. I think the le less you know about this in advance, the better it will be. So if you can avoid trailers and reviews beforehand, that'd be great. Yeah. And also maybe you shouldn't be watching this part. Yeah, we're gonna stop talking about. Yeah, there's it. no spoiler alert. No. But um, uh, do go see that because apparently it's the shiz. Mm. Uh, then we have Lawless, which is a fantastic cast, unfortunately headed by Shia LaBeouf. Uh, but also Tom Hardy and Gary Oldman and Guy Pearce and Mia Jessica Wesky and Jessica Chastain and lots of people. And Prohibition era from the director of The Road and the writer of The Proposition and very intense and violent but well made film. Yeah, not as violent as The Proposition and not quite as depressing as The Road. So, yeah. Yeah, so go see that. Yeah. And then finally we have Killing Them Softly. Which is from the director of Chopper and the assassinated Jesse James with the director of Robert Coward. Director. <laughs> Coward. Coward. By the Coward Robert Ford. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Right. We got there. Yeah. And Brad Pitt as a gang enforcer who's told to investigate a robbery of a... Card game. Card game. And it has Ray Liotta, James Gandolfini, Richard Jenkins, Brad Pitt. And also... Looks cool. It's meant to be like this year's answer to Drive. So there's that. Mm. Um, so that's the things to look forward to in September. Also in September we have Movie Fest. Obvious plug. Obvious plug. Yay! Uh, Movie Fest takes place in Cineworld. If you're watching this, you better get to Cineworld quick and get your tickets. Seriously, because it's totally worth it. Rory and I were involved with the running of it last year, and it was a whole load of fun. There's three movie screenings a day one of which each day is going to be a surprise mm. and there'll be super secret footage and some of it's not so secret because it's already been announced that um, Iron Man 3 footage and footage from Neil Jordan's Byzantium is going to be shown so if you need tickets go to Cineworld or check out movies.ie forward slash fest for more and as a second oh my god that's a really obvious plug obvious plug obvious plug the Fingal Film Festival is now taking your submissions you, it's taking your submissions, uh, for your films and your short films. It takes place in March next year, so if you want to submit your film and get in with a chance of having your film shown at a festival, check out FingalFilmFest.com. And until next time, I've been Brogan Hayes, and he has been Rory Cashin. Brian's been there with a lamp, and Mary's been there with an iPhone. Hi, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you been here this whole time? Yeah! Hi! <laughs> Freak. And <laughs> <laughs> um, this has been August. And why so serious? To I love. Perfect. Yay! Yay!